name is Pathan Sadia Asghar Ali. My topic of discussion today is a basal segment of breathing, a needed case for the general population. Before I tell you why I took this topic, I, I did some assessment on my family members. So here you can see here that I took all my family members. Luckily, I have all the age groups family members in my house. A, B, C, D, E, F. Their ages respectively 10 years, 16, 22, 28, 32 and 46 years. Before starting the assessment, I took two points into the consideration. First is any kind of signs and symptoms of respiratory infection or respiratory problem. And secondly, their chest, uh, chest diameters to exclude any kind of chest deformities. As you can see, none of them have any kind of symptoms except for me myself having the dyspnea grade 1 according to MMRC scale and my mother having dyspnea grade 2 which says that she has breathlessness performing during moderate type of exercise. Secondly, I took chest diameter, transverse and anterior posterior diameters of the chest, which are measured is to the ratio of 7 is to 5, which is normal in all of the cases except for my mother, who is having pigeon chest. And she is a hypertensive woman. She has had hypertension. So we can say out of all these uh, family members, my mother is a patient here. So here my main examination starts, which is a chest expansion at different levels of axilla, nipple or zygostana. At axilla, we can, if uh, there is problem at the nipple level, the nipples or uh, breast have sagged down or something like that, you can use fourth intercostal also. The ratio or the difference normal should be 2 is to 3 is to 5. So or we can say in two inches, 1 is to 1.5 is to 2. Now as you see, the elder ones, the younger ones have greater chest expansion at their upper chest as compared to the normal while in middle also everyone has normal but as you keep in C at the ziffy sternal level everyone has a reduced none of them have near 4 also they are all and 3 3 2.5 2.5 3.5 and 2.5 which indicate in all the age groups that it is reduced chest expansion though they are not a patient or though they have, don't have any kind of respiratory problem though they have cancer so today i have to present some facts and demerits or the focus on the things what can happen if you have lower chest expansion first i will tell you about two facts first fact is that lower low consists of five bronchiopulmonary segments out of 10 bronchiopulmonary segments five are located in lower lips which are the functional unit of respiratory system so we can say that half of the lung presents into the lower lobes okay second point lower lobes are very prone to get infected owing to the gravity so the most functional part of the lung is very easily to get infected leading into the viscous cycle of inflammation that is excessive mucus secretion narrowing of the airways the cough expectoration the symptoms later on leading to consolidation and collapse so these are the two facts so we need to that's why that's the thing why we need to focus on lower lobes because it have the maximum efficiency and second is it is very easily getting infected now my point here is that first if i say there is a reduced chest expansion in the lower chest it says there is a reduced pressure generation in the lower chest which in turn reduces the efficiency to draw enough amount of air within the lung. So, reduction in pressure will return or relate into the reduction in the volume of air that is captured, which in turn or directly we can say it reduces the lung compliance. Now, what is lung compliance? Lung compliance is a measure for the elasticity of alveoli. Every alveoli have its different uh, lung compliance, uh, the ability to expand, but if there is not sufficient amount of pressure, volume air can't get easily entered. So that is my first point, the lung becomes stiff, the lung becomes less compliant and as it becomes less compliant, it is easily to get infected because it can't cope up with the air or it can't compensate for any kind of infection in those things. All right? My second point says, if there is a reduction in ventilation, it will directly drop into the VQ quotient. Now what is VQ quotient? VQ quotient is ventilation perfusion quotient. Normally it is 0.9. But when it is reduced, which means the partial pressure of oxygen is reduced and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is increased, which means it is very difficult to expel the carbon dioxide out, which is seen in the COPD patient. Now, we are not any patient. We won't having the VQ quotient reduced, but we are going near to it because there is not great amount of ventilation going there. So that can be the reason. Third point I want to say is that 
reduced chest expansion at the lower uh, segments can say that there is a reduced buccal handle movement at the lower lobes right uh, like there are three movements which are uh, occurring to increase the chest expansion the pump handle movement uh, produced by the upper ribs buccal handle by the lower ribs and the piston movements by the diaphragm so it can indirectly leads to the uh, impairment of the mobility of the costo vertebral joints so that the lower ribs are not moving properly to produce the buccal handle movement fourth according to the national center of the health statistic report 2017 and 18 it is say the prevalence of obesity in india is 42.4 percentage and it is predicted that it might increase in the upcoming years so what is this related to it is related to that if obesity increases that reduces the space for diaphragm to move which reduces the efficiency of the diaphragm in breathing in such patients so that's why i want to focus on basal segment of breathing if a person is obese also and he is having a problem of breathing right he has dyspnea we will definitely going to suggest for a pulse breathing and diaphragmatic breathing and he is also having reduced lower chest expansion but we know the efficiency of diaphragmatic breathing is less so we should increase or we should encourage basal segment of breathing in those kind of patients i am saying please add basal segment of breathing in protocol also i might be wrong i might be right also so let us see into the comments what we see because now right now i'm not that so experienced i have recently completed my studies and now this is the time that i explore people i do study related to people i can see what the people are who needs right so let's have a discussion that what uh, i think is right or wrong because i really feel the majority of the people around us have reduced chest expansion even there are ct related cases ortho related cases or neuro related cases everyone needs breathing exercise and we have to focus on good amount of ventilation because good amount of ventilation will lead into good amount of respiration ventilation is just movement of air respiration is the exchange of gases so if there is not good amount of air in itself only how we can get the oxygen out of it so i want to focus about that and if you uh, practice the basal segment of breathing or any kind of exercise always do remember to perform the air clearance technique before doing so now i gonna uh, this is my first social media video i want to grab this opportunity to thank the people nearby me so i want to thank my teachers and my friends family members who have supported me my seniors and juniors who whom i have learned and last but not the least i would like to thank the e physiocon for giving us the platform so that we can use up our mind open up mind and learn the things so thank you so much and take care assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi